Witnessing leads to no mind. Patience is the secret key along the spiritual path. There are no shortcuts along the path. Therefore, don't be impatient. Be patient. Existence needs immense patience. The ultimate mysteries are opened only to those who have immense patience and trust. Patience is the seed of trust. This is the secret how witnessing leads to no mind. But both are two shores, are two sides of the process that we know as meditation. Meditation begins with witnessing and in the final analysis the same witnessing becomes no mind. Witnessing is the seed that has to be planted in the fertilized soil and no mind is the blossoming of that seed or announcement of the season of spring. Now you know the secret. You have the master key which can open every moment into a glimpse of no mind. No mind is the final stage when mind disappears forever and thoughts, thoughtless gap becomes your intrinsic reality. This, if this, if these few glimpses are coming, they show you are on the right path and you are using the right method. Don't be impatient. Existence needs immense patience. The ultimate mysteries are opened only to those who have immense patience. I am reminded in old Tibet it was customary, respectful that every family should contribute to the great experiment of expanding consciousness. So the first child of each family was given to the monasteries to be trained in meditation. Perhaps no country has done such a vast experiment in consciousness. The destruction of Tibet at the hands of communist China an ignorant silence of Indian Prime Minister Maulana Nehru is one of the greatest calamities that could have happened to humanity. It is not only a question of a small country, really it is a question of great experiment that was going on for centuries in Tibet. The first child was given to the monasteries when he was very small, just five or at the most six years old. But Tibet knew that children can learn witnessing better than grown-ups. The grown-ups are already utterly spoiled. The child is innocent and yet the state of his mind is empty. Therefore, to teach him emptiness is absolutely easy but the entrance of a child into a monastery was very difficult particularly for a small child i am reminded of one incident i am telling you only one there would have been hundreds of incidents like these it is bound to be so a small child, six year old, is leaving. His mother is crying because life in a monastery for a small child is going to be arduous. The father tells the child, don't look back. It is a question of our family's respectability. Not even once has a child in the whole history of our family ever look back. Whatever is the test to be given for entrance into the monastery, even if your life is at risk, don't look back. 
do not think of me or your mother or her tears we are sending you for the ultimate experiment in human consciousness with great joy although the separation is painful but we know you will pass through all the tests you are our blood and of course you will keep the dignity of your family the small child rides the horse with a servant riding on another horse alongside a tremendous desire arises in him when the road turns just to have a look back look again back to the family family house its garden the father must be standing there the mother must be crying but he remembers that the father has said do not look back and he does not look back he does not look back with tears in his eyes he turns with the road now he cannot see his house anymore and one and never knows how long it will take perhaps years and years until he will be able to see his parents and his family again he reaches the monastery at the gate of the monastery the abbot greets him receives him gracefully as if he is a grown up bows down to him as if he bows down to the abbot and the abbot says your first test will be to sit outside the gate with closed eyes unmoving unless you are called in the small child sits at the gate outside outside the gate with closed eyes hours passed and he cannot even move there are flies sitting on his face and he cannot remove them it is a question of the dignity that the abbot has shown to him he does not think any more like a child so respected he has to fulfill the family's longings the abbot expectations the whole day passes and even the other monks in the monastery start feeling sorry for the child hungry and thirsty he is simply waiting they start feeling that the child is small but has great courage and guts finally by the time the sun is setting the whole day has passed the abbot comes and takes the child in he says you have passed the first test but there are many more peaks ahead i repeat i respect your patience being such a small child you remained unmoving you did not open your eyes you did not lose courage and you trusted that whenever the time is right you will be called in the child has to wait outside the gate remain patient and trust when the time is right he will be called in finally by the time the sun was setting the whole day has passed the abbot comes and takes the child in and says you have passed the first test but there are many more peaks like this and then years of training in witnessing the child was only allowed to see his parents again after perhaps 10 years 20 years had elapsed but the criteria was that 
until he experiences no mind he cannot be allowed to see his parents his family once he achieves the no mind then he can move back into the world now there is no problem once a man attains to the state of no mind nothing can distract him from his being there is no power bigger than the power of the power of no mind no harm can be done to such a person no attachment no greed no jealousy no anger nothing can arise in him no mind is absolutely a pure sky without any clouds enough